Our discussion of entropy now leads us into the second law of thermodynamics. And one way in which this can be stated is the inequality of Clausius. Clausius being a famous physicist who we'll see for uh, certain relationships and phase changes later on. There is this quantity s, which is the entropy, and it's a state function. And for any change in the state of an isolated system, the entropy is greater than or equal to, or the, the change in entropy is greater than or equal to the differential of heat divided by temperature. So you'll note that here I have starred and underlined an isolated system multiple times because this is the key fact about the second law of thermodynamics. It only applies to isolated systems. You might hear at various places people talking about the second law of thermodynamics. It's talking about, uh, you know, you can't create complexity because disorder always increases. Well, that's not true. It's only true for an isolated system. So a system like the Earth is not an isolated system because it's constantly receiving an input of energy from the sun in the form of solar radiation, in the form of you know UV, infrared rays, what have you. So just so we're clear, the Earth is not an isolated system, and the second law of thermodynamics does not apply to the system of the Earth. It applies to the entire universe in totality, but it does not apply to uh, systems unless they cannot exchange uh, matter or energy with their surroundings. Okay, so let's f talk more about the consequences of this second law of thermodynamics here for isolated systems. So you'll notice this is greater than or equal to, and before we were defining ds as being equal to the heat of a reversible process divided by the temperature. So the equality in this in this uh, inequality there is for a process which is reversible. So it's equal when the process is reversible. And the greater than applies when the process is irreversible. So an irreversible process which increases the entropy is a spontaneous process. And a process which does not change the entropy is a reversible process. And one which decreases entropy will require an input of energy from outside the system. Okay, so another way we could state the second law of thermodynamics here would be that ds for the entire universe ds universe is greater than or equal to zero for any process. So the universe in totality is an isolated system and any spontaneous process which occurs in the universe, any irreversible process which happens in the universe is going to create entropy. It is going to increase the total entropy of the universe. So the entropy of the universe can only increase over time. So sometimes the second law of thermodynamics is said to give us the arrow of time. It tells us which direction in time is forward and which direction is backward because the direction in time which which in which the entropy of the universe increases is going forward in time and the direction in time in which the entropy of the university uh, ent entropy of the universe, sorry, the direction in time in which the entropy of the universe decreases is the past. So it kind of creates that asymmetry in the, in the flow of time in that way. So then to sum up the first and second law of thermodynamics as we have learned them thus far, the first law is conservation of energy. For any process, the energy change in the universe equals zero. So you cannot create or destroy energy, and the energy of the universe is constant. That was the first law. And the energy of any isolated system will remain constant as well, the, the universe being the biggest isolated system we know of. And then for the second law, the change in entropy for the universe, 
or any isolated system is greater than or equal to zero for any process which changes the state of the universe or whichever isolated system we are discussing.